again. How's everybody doing? This episode of Cannabis as Medicine is all about how to read a certificate of analysis. If you're not familiar with me, my name is Bonnie Goldstein. I'm a physician in California specializing in cannabis medicine. Um, I trained as a pediatrician many years ago and worked in the field of critical care transport and pediatric emergency medicine. Around 2007, 2008, I had a friend who was sick who started using cannabis medicine and I was blown away by her results and intrigued and I started working in the field and I haven't looked back since. Um, I'm involved in multiple aspects of the cannabis industry, but mostly taking care of patients. I uh, wrote a book called Cannabis is Medicine and you can check out the links below if you wanna read more. And let's move on to what is a certificate of analysis. So we call this the COA, and it's basically a certificate created by a licensed lab that shows the analytical test results on a batch of cannabis products. So it confirms the potency and the purity of the product, basically answering the question, is this product safe for me to consume? And so what does it test for? So we see tests for cannabinoid potency, how much THC, how much CBD, how much CBDA, how much CBG, and so on in terms of the cannabinoids. What's the terpene profile? So remember terpenes are the essential oils in the plant. They add and synergize with the cannabinoids to give uh, benefits um, in terms of to enhance sleep or to reduce anxiety. Uh, to uh, reduce depression, uh, to help with pain. So terpene is very important to know the terpene profile of any product that you're using. These tests also let us know whether or not there's residual solvents. So when many products are made, solvents are used in that process. We do not want to be consuming solvents at the end of the day. Uh, so uh, testing for solvents is also very important. We also wanna know if there's pesticides in our product. And in general, we do not want to in include pesticides. Here we are trying to take a natural plant and then chemicals are added to it in order for it to not be eaten up by various um, pests. So uh, looking at the pesticide report is very important in limiting these chemicals in your consumption. Also, we look at microbial contaminants, things like bacteria and so on mycotoxins like mold, heavy metals as well. And in general, I do not uh, endorse the use of any cannabis products that do not have a available, uh, easy to read, transparent uh, COA. So let's go over some important terms first. So if you see milligram per gram on a uh, COA, this is usually referring to the amount of the cannabinoids. Um, and what it tells you is how many milligrams of a specific cannabinoid or the total cannabinoids in one gram weight of material. Milligram per ml, this is milligrams per milliliter. How many milligrams of a specific cannabinoid or total cannabinoids in one milliliter of a liquid? One milliliter, just for reference, is one fifth of a teaspoon. LOD is often listed, and this is called the limit of detection. And this tells you the lowest quantity of a substance that can be detected by a specific instrument. And this is usually expressed in parts per million. The LOQ is the limit of quanti quantitation. So this is the lowest concentration of a substance in a sample that can be determined with acceptable precision and accuracy, also expressed in parts per million. An action threshold, sometimes called an action limit, and this is the highest allowable level of an analyte. And this is usually based on, uh, in the United States, like a state requirement or state criteria if a product is going through um, a state medical cannabis program uh, for a dispensary. So um, if it's over this action limit, it really shouldn't be on the market. It means that the product is testing over a certain pesticide or, or too much uh, heavy metal or so on. So this is the limit at which uh, the maximum allowed. And then CFU per gram, sometimes you'll see this, this is colony forming units per gram. And this is used to measure the microbial contaminants. So they actually look at how many 
colonies of bacteria or mold might be growing uh, in one gram. So very important terms to understand so that you can uh, understand what's going on uh, with the product that was tested. Okay, basic information. Of course, you wanna name, know the name of the testing lab and the brand name of the product and manufacturer. That should be right there on the paperwork. The batch number, the product description. Often there's a QR code so that you can either look at the QR code on your product, bring that up and you can see the, the um, COA or sometimes you're provided with uh, the QR code like in a dispensary, and then you can pull that up and you can see the COA for a product. Um, also, this should have a report date. We don't want a report date from three years ago. We want a product that we're getting today or a product that hasn't expired. Now, also you may see an expiration date on the COA. Some uh, companies put that on there, some don't. This at the bottom is just a sample. It shows the product code. The product description, I uh, took out the brand name. I'm not endorsing anything today. Uh, so this is just telling you 50 milligrams olive oil, 100 mLs, and it gives you the batch number, how many units were manufactured, the manufacture date, the expiration date, and also the batch size, how many milliliters um, was contained in this batch. And um, this may vary product to product, but in general, these are the basic things that you should see on a COA. Next, let's look at the cannabinoid potency. So this is just an example here. So here you can see to the left here at the bottom, all the various phytocannabinoids that were tested for. It gives you the limits of detection. So basically what level at which they can detect these compounds and then the limits of quanti quanti uh, quantitation um, telling you how accurate it is and the, the, the level of accuracy. And then basically your results. So it's in percent here. So this tells you, so Delta 9 THC, there's uh, 61.664%, okay? And what that converts to in terms of milligram per gram is 616.64 milligrams per gram weight of material. ND means none detected. So as you can see, there's no um, THCA in this product. There's no, um, let's see. Uh, CBDA in this product. Um, but you can see here for CBD going across, there's 9.9%, which converts to 99 milligrams per gram. And then at the bottom here, it gives you the total. This is pretty straightforward. Now, if you wanted to calculate what the ratio is for this, um, depending on how you look at it, if you put THC to CBD, it's going to be, you would take this and divide by this. So THC divided by CBD would be like a 10 to one. I usually like CBD first, CBD to THC. So this would be a one to 10. So that tells you that obviously this is much more dominant in THC as you can see by the numbers. So this just gives you your total cannabinoids. This is nice to be able to see if the bottle is labeled, let's say, uh, it's a tincture and it says 50 milligram per one ml and you check the COA and the COA says 10 milligram per one, one ml, you have some discrepancy there. What's going on? Why is the bottle labeled this way? And the COA is labeled saying it's much less. So this is very important to make sure that your labeling is correct and you are getting uh, what you're expecting to get in that bottle. Now here's pesticides. So uh, this is a fail, as you can see up here on the right. So numerous pesticides with LOD, LOQ, and also the action limits, as we talked about. And as you can see here, I'm just going to pick this one. So permethrin. So um, the action limit for permethrin is 0.5 parts per million. So it's a, it's a tiny amount. It, you're not supposed to have over that. This failed because, as you can see, it has over 0.5 parts per million at 0.5. 7986. Same thing here, it fails in multiple other uh, categories for pesticides. Although certain states allow for certain pesticides to be used, I do not recommend using a product with pesticides. There are plenty of products out there that do not have pesticides. So here we are again trying to use natural products and yet there's chemicals in the product. And um, I have seen where um, you know, companies have said, oh, it was runoff. We don't really use it, but it's a runoff from another farm that's located next to us. Um, I understand that there's, you know, some complicated issues with this. However, 
Again, there's plenty of products out there that do not contain pesticides. So I don't see any reason to uh, use a cannabis product that contains a pesticide. That's how I feel about my food. And this is how I feel about uh, cannabis as well. And certainly the plant is uh, subject just like all plants to pests. And uh, I understand that this is a big concern for cultivators. However, there are many um, cultivators that are approaching um, the pest problem with natural solutions. And uh, I hope to see more cultivators uh, not using pesticides. And moving on for microbials, mycotoxins, and heavy metals, as you can see here for microbials, here's a number of microbials that they're testing and they all pass. So they did not detect any in one gram weight of material. And as you can see here, it has the date tested and it tells you some other various information, how it was analyzed, qPCR. Um, here's mycotoxins. So uh, these are molds, uh, very nasty aflatoxins and okra toxin. You definitely don't want this in your medicine. And again, this particular passes, none detected. That's what ND is, okay? And then heavy metals. So there's four heavy metals that most focus on arsenic, cadmium, lead, and mercury. Important thing to understand is the cannabis plant is what we call a bioaccumulator. It pulls out uh, contaminants from the soil. And in fact, um, hemp is often planted in areas where the soil is contaminated because of this uh, particular property in that it sucks out, pulls out, the contaminants from the soil. And you know, back in the 90s with the Chernobyl nuclear um, accident, they planted hemp all around that area to help clean up the soil. And apparently it worked very well. Um, but certainly in your medicine, you do not want heavy metals. And although these numbers are considered um, in general low, this is the lead is kind of high here, uh, this fails. And remember that you know, if you were to take something once or twice, it would be no big deal. But to use something that's your medicine on a regular daily basis, certainly you do not want to have heavy metals in your product. So you definitely want to see this on every COA uh, for any product that you're using. And then here's residual solvents. So you can see that this particular test gives a pass, but it did test positive for here. Uh, this is acetone and here for isopropanol, uh, uh, propanol. Um, and so although it, remember, you see it's below the limit. So you can see here that uh, the limit set by the state for acetone is 5,000. This is micrograms per gram. And this is very low. Same here, 5,000 is the limit and it's at 50. And again, this is a very small amount, but if you can avoid residual solvents, it is my suggestion that you get the cleanest possible medicine by avoiding the solvents and the pesticides. So remember that all of these um, tests should be done on every product that you use. Um, I go into this in more detail in my book, Cannabis is Medicine. I hope this was helpful. Have a great day, everybody.